Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Um, today we're gonna do a pretty cool fly. Um. The benefit to you is that I've been listening to Pantera in the car all day long, so I kind of need to get some rage out. Um, we posted this fly a little while back, and uh, it is a game changer thinger. So let's see if I can hold this right. So the tail is Arctic Fox. The body, instead of the, the chocolate's body wrap, is a, a material called Game Changer Chenille. So we have every color of that. I'm going to do it in clear and just color it up. Um, the Flyman articulated fish spines and then bruiser blend for the head that it's trimmed up. And the best part about this one is it's got the uh, belly scratcher weighting system. So it swims awesome. Anyway, so I've got the articulated fish spine starter pack. So it has four different sizes, uh, enough for six, six flies if you use every single one in, in per fly. Um, but you can kind of vary these quite a bit. Um, but anyway, they're they're pretty cool product. And as you can see, we have a different vise. Uh, this is the Regal with the big game jaws. This is Revolution. Uh, and we've been tying on these for a little bit. Pretty sweet vices. So... Anyway, the cool thing about this big game jaw is you can put stuff right here in the in the tip of it, like I have, and then there are some notches in the jaw that we'll show you as soon as I, I put a hook in there. Uh, the thread I'm using is Danville's 210 denier, just in white. Uh, probably the thread I use the very most. And we'll just wrap this up. Now, everybody knows this is not an original pattern. We're not claiming it. Blaine Chocolate did a great job of uh, creating this fly and I, I actually watched one of his videos on how he did the game changer and it really helped my technique so um, yeah we watch videos too we're always trying to learn and get better at this so anyway so the tail on this instead of the floral fiber we're going to use uh, just arctic fox I have white and obviously you can change these colors up uh, we'll probably list maybe uh two or three colors for for the recipes on this below the video in the tutorial so I'm going to take a clump about like that and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these guard hairs out of it just so it'll move a little bit better and the way I typically do that is just pinch it pretty tightly and then just grab them by the very tips and they'll pull right out so the other thing is I'm going to prepare the butt section of this by just combing it out a little bit. All right, so I'm just going to brush the, the butt ends out a little tiny bit too. Sometimes there's just a little bit of under fluff in that as well. So we'll, we'll remove all that. And then uh, I'm actually going to cut those flush like this. But I'm going to tie them in going forward. So I'm just going to kind of push that clump over that eye. Well, first I got to take my thread up to it. Okay, so I'm going to place that all the way around that shank. Just make some loose wraps and just kind of distribute that all the way around the hook. And then just pull that back. Okay, now we've got full coverage around the hook shank. Jeez. And then we're just going to whip finish that. And put a little bit of head cement. Okay, that's the tail. So we're going to take that out and then we're going to grab, I think, what is that? This is the 10 millimeter shank. I'm going to go to the 15 millimeter shank and I'm just going to connect those together. All right. 
So one of the things that I learned when I was watching uh, Blaine Chocolate tie it is when you when you uh, put your thread on for this next section, you want to take it pretty far back up this kind of ramp so that there's not a lot of room for that to wiggle around. So right about there is pretty good. So you can see that I'm kind of wiggling that and it's wanting to slide down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of zap. Oh, Curtis, your zap is all gummed up. Holy crap, and then it comes out fast. All right. So just a little bit of super glue will lock that in place. Okay. Now we get to play with the chocolate's game changer chenille. So this stuff's super cool. I was really excited when I saw it because the other stuff I really like as well. But it seems like it's hard to gauge how much to use so you don't waste a ton. So it's just basically a really thick chenille. And for for parts of it or most of it, it's it's kind of folded to one side so you can get to that core really well. Even if it's not... That's fine. We're just going to peel off some of this uh, fluff and just tie that in by the core and go all the way back to that to the back part of that thread here and then we're going to go forward to the eye. Alright, so I'm going to start wrapping this and after each wrap I'm going to pull those fibers back. So this is going to be what we do basically for the whole rest of the fly until we get up to the head. So you get the picture. I mean this stuff's pretty dang easy to use. <clears throat> so really push it back with a lot of pressure. Try to make it so that only that core is touching the shank. And then I'm going to get pretty aggressive up on this eye. And tie that off. And this stuff is actually pretty soft. It's softer than the other stuff. It's not polypropylene like the other stuff is. Okay, now we will whip finish it. All right, section number one complete. I mean, two complete. More of this water based cement. Okay, so now we're on to the third section, which is 20 millimeters. I'm just going to connect that together. And again, I'll stick it in right at the very tip. Same story. Now for the other section. We've got these two sections wrapped. They're exactly the same length. And this is why I like these five inch scissors. These are by Streamworks. And uh, one blade's serrated, one blade's not. It's a five inch scissor. That's why I'm not using the Rattlebass Fang right now because 
this gets a, a straight cross or a straight cut all the way across so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of angle that down like that and start to create my wedge so I've kind of got it shaped rough roughly where I want it to be so now what I'm going to do is once you get it cut like this, you're going to have these big long fibers here. So I'm going to bend the tail over and kind of come in here and really whack those. Okay, I'm going to put it back in the vise now um, by that back hook or the back shank. And that way I can kind of test my taper here. So you can see I need to kind of come in more aggressively here. And take your time. Hey, that's Davy McPhail reference, isn't it? I'm tidying up. So just kind of follow that angle that you created on that back half all the way up. All right, so the final shank is 25 millimeters. Put it together just like the other one. So I'm going to hold it like this and now this is where the five inch scissor really comes in handy because I can just barely move it and get a nice taper cut all the way down and that's about as thick as your fly is going to be with this uh, game changer chenille so if you want a real big bulky thick fly um, you're going to be a lot better off using the body wrap but it's the same program I mean same exact thing for what I'm doing here that's pretty dang good so we have you know good junctions it's gonna move like crazy in the water all right so that's that's the shank portion of this fly all right so we're uh we're putting the front, we're ready to put the body onto the hook now. I've got a 2 aught Gamakatsu B10S. And you can see how that's seated in this big game jaw. And it looks like it's maybe not seated far back enough. But if you can look down in, you can kind of see them right there. But there are two big notches in this. So what I do is I'll just kind of barely open it up until I feel it kind of go in that, that bend. Or, like I said, I'll open it up until I feel it there. That's the angle I want. Okay. So, it's it's in there. I mean, we'll, you'll break that hook before it slips. Um, so, I'm just going to dress the, the hook with thread. And I'm going to bring it down the bend of the hook just a little bit, right about to there as I do with the majority of my articulated flies. Then I'm just gonna take some wire and uh, place that on just like that. And now, you know, with a lot of our flies, we've used beads to space stuff out, but this time we're not. We're just gonna loop that directly on to the shank eye. And make a really small loop, maybe about the sizes of, of this hook eye. Or the, the shank eye, I should say. And tie that down. So that's going to be our connection. Now, 
if you wanted to, you could actually tie this back section on like a stinger hook or something, and that would work great as well. So once I come up here, this is kind of a little bit weird, but there's going to be a belly scratcher waiting system on this fly. But I want to lock these down, so I'm going to take this small, this short piece and tie that down. And then maybe go right here up a little bit, and then I'm going to lock this one back as well. But the reason I left this long is because I'm going to put some tungsten beads on it. So it is kind of a, a pain, but kind of needs to be there. All right. So back to the tie-in point, or the where the thread ends. So again, we'll, we'll peel it off. So I'm going to put just a little bit of super glue on this and this thin stuff. This is the same as the Zappa Gap thin. It's just Curtis has off brand everything. It's really cheap dollar store ninja here. Okay. And I want to make sure that I don't cover up that connection. So I got to be careful here. There will be a little bit of a gap between those two. That's fine. Okay, so right about there is where we're going to stop. And as you can see, we've already tapered that all the way up to this. So we, you know, just check it one last time. You shouldn't need to trim it much. I mean, this is, that's good to go just like it is. So now I'm going to take, um, a 4.6 mil bead and a 5.5 mil bead. No. Um, so I, I've got two beads on right, right like this. Um, so I've got those placed. And, and the cool thing about this fly is if I were to put this wire in further back, I could put up to five of these 5.5 millimeter tungsten beads. So you can make it as light or as heavy as you want. It would probably kill correctly just with the 5.5 mil bead, but I want it to sink a little bit. I mean, that's a lot of material to, to pull through the water, so um, I like it a little bit heavier. So I'm going to tie that down, and once I have it tied down, I'm going to really get it snug. And uh, wrap it up and then pull it back. Then use flush cutters to trim that off. Okay, so that's basically how we want the body of the fly to be. Um, from here, I'm actually going to flip it upside down because it uh, it's going to ride like this in the water. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a clump of bruiser blend on the top, a clump of bruiser blend on the bottom, and then I'll do another clump in front of that, a bruiser blend junior, so I can trim it all up. Kind of like the belly scratcher sculpin if you've seen that. All right, so what you guys don't see behind the scenes a lot, this is my bruiser blend dubbing dispenser. Yeah. Um... Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take out some bruiser blend on the top. On this one, I'm gonna use the color Alpha Wolf. That's probably my favorite bruiser blend color. And I'm just kind of stacking the fibers um, 
add a little bit as you go just to kind of get a right amount so I've got it about like this so I want I'm going to tie that in right about in the middle section right butting up to those uh, to the chenille and I'm going to kind of make it flat like this so when I tie it in it will wrap around the sides and uh, bruiser blend's cool because it will just stay just like that until you're you're wanting to do something else with it so I'll, I'll tie it in like that and I see I need to pull it over to this side a little bit so I'll do that and then uh, on the bottom I'll use white um, if I would have used like a cream colored game changer chenille I would have matched it with a cream bruiser blend but since I used white or clear technically I'll use a white bruiser blend we're going to now put the white on the bottom just like the top and wrap that down so you see that kind of covers up those beads now I'm going to come in here and just put a little bit of glue in that junction and that will seep in so now um, what I'm going to do is just kind of comb this out and flare it like a fan shape so when I pull it over itself it doesn't get all globbed up in one spot do that for the bottom too <clears throat> I'm actually gonna put two more clumps of dubbing in front of those so again I'm gonna use alpha wolf and white but I'm gonna use the Bruiser Blend Junior this time because I'm actually going to trim this head before we put eyes on it. And I guess you could just take the chenille all the way forward and just put a clump of Bruiser Blend on and call it good, but this makes it look pretty cool. doesn't look like much right now all right so really the fly is not hard it's just tedious it takes forever to put all the crap on a hook so at this point we're going to take a brush and Curtis lost his Stonpo brush so we're using the Wasatch tools one both of them work equally so you can see how this is really taking shape now um, so once I, I have it all brushed out you'll see there's a bunch of waste there now I'm going to take my comb and go into the head and brush it straight uh, perpendicular I was trying to think of the word perpendicular to the hook shank so I can trim it and it's going to trim all nice and even like that so we got bad afro right now so I'm going to switch scissors these are tungsten scissors and they have smooth blades but they're they're super sharp and that's why I'm going to use those these are also streamworks scissors and I'm going to kind of find the angle that I want to cut it at and I'll start making my cuts and just kind of rotate the fly around for that first stage of cuts So you can see how that all just kind of sticks on there like that. Stupid dog. All right, so you can see that that, that trimmed up pretty nice. I'm going to do one more round, and on the sides I'm going to go pretty aggressive. So we kind of have a little bit of a mohawk here, that's fine. We're going to actually trim that again once we get it glued. So 
I'm going to take my fingers and kind of mash it skinny so you can see that that's really slender at this point okay so now we're ready to put eyes on so these super pearl eyes these 3d eyes uh, from hairline are really cool because they're pretty translucent and they pick up a little bit of the color from behind it actually I'm gonna color it before I put those on so I'm gonna take a chart pack marker and I'm gonna use the Delta brown color I'm just gonna kind of go over the top to darken that up just a bit and I'll brush that out a little bit and then for the fly I'm gonna color uh, the top essentially the fly so I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth pretty aggressively just like that so now Basically, the top half of the fly is covered or colored. Right down the middle of that back, I'm going to take a black chart pack marker and just kind of make a stripe and same along the head. And so that just kind of has like a three dimensional color. So that mats it down just a little bit. I'm just going to come back in here with my comb and brush that out. And then I'm going to kind of give the, the gill plate just a touch of color as well. I've got this goldenrod colored chart pack marker. And I'm going to kind of saturate that a little bit and then rub it in. So we're nice and, and blended here. And then you can even add one more color of depth here and just put like some orangish right at the tip and then blend that into the yellow. Okay. All right, now we're ready for eyes. Brush that out. And this is where we're going to use our good old tear mender. I keep it in a loon applicator bottle so that I can get really in tight. Okay, now this is good to show. It's totally clogged up right now. And a lot of people don't like tear mender because it does this. So all I'm going to do is take off this applicator needle. This is why I like the Loon uh, bottles really well. And I can come up under here and actually pin that clogged section against the side of the, the needle and then pull it right out. There's that clump. With tear mender, if you get it on your fingers like this, all you do is rub your fingers together and it balls up and just comes right off. It's a pretty unique glue. So watch, I'll clean this bobbin off. Just get it off on my fingers. Then rub it. It's gone. And then before I put any on the fly, I'm just going to test to see if it comes out on my finger. And it does. So I'm going to put on enough to kind of soak through to the middle. And then just kind of lightly place the eye on to where the glue is for now. Like that. So once I have that on, I'm just going to take my fingers and gently squeeze those together. I don't want to push too hard because then what will happen is the eyes will slip. I just want it enough so that glue is going to bond to itself and the core of the fly. So now we're we're pretty solid. Now I'm going to just take those scissors and do one last touch up on top of the eyes and beneath the eyes. You can see I've got a little clump here. And then as a final touch, if you want to, you don't have to do this, but um, I'm just going to come in and right behind that eye and add a gill plate. Anyway, there's a game changer variation with a bruiser blend head and a belly scratcher weighting system, but... Uh, 
swims great it's a little bit heavy but uh, all the stuff you can uh, you need to tie this fly is found on store.flyfishfood.com